We live in a complicated world full of stress and worry. As Christians, though, we are to be in the world but not of the world. It's so refreshing and truly glorious to know that God's way is not that of stress and worry. The gospel of Christ is simple. In the first place, the gospel is simple in prophecy. We can know that the Bible is true and that it is God's revelation to man by considering Old Testament prophecies and their fulfillment in the New Testament. Some will say, what is simple about prophecy? Prophecies are cryptic and confusing. They miss the point, though. Fulfilled prophecy is simple to see and impossible to deny. Fulfilled prophecy proves the Bible to be true. Let us consider a couple of Old Testament prophecies, their fulfillment in the New Testament. Uh, in the fulfillment in the New Testament showing that Jesus to be the Christ and we'll see how they provide that simple undeniable proof that as I said Jesus is the the Christ and that he is the son of God Isaiah chapter 53 gives a detailed prophecy of the Christ particularly of his last days on this earth now I'm not going to read the entire chapter we read it quite frequently especially before we take the Lord's Supper because it does give such a graphic depiction of what Jesus went through. But let's point out just a couple of verses. In verse 3, we read, He is despised and rejected by men. <clears throat> but we see this fulfilled in Jesus when in Matthew chapter 26, verses 3 and 4, we read, Then the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders of the people assembled at the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, Caiaphas and plotted to take Jesus by trickery and kill him. Further in verse 3, we see that Jesus is a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We see this in Jesus in Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 38, which says, Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. Going on in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5 we read, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Now we can go on and, uh, on, and on through Isaiah chapter 53 and read more detail of how cruelly the Christ was to be treated. We can then go to Matthew chapter 27 and see beyond a shadow of a doubt that Isaiah chapter 53 is, is speaking of Jesus, the Christ. In fact, any honest person who reads Isaiah chapter 53 and compares it to Matthew chapter 27 will hear the words shouting out from the page, fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And they'll realize that this proves the authenticity of the Bible. Isaiah was written hundreds of years before Jesus Christ was born and could only correctly prophesy of Jesus if it was inspired by God. Simple. I'll read also from uh, Second, Ch Second Samuel, uh, chapter seven, verses twelve through seventeen. It says, "When your days are fulfilled, and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, who will come in from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will, shall be my son." If he commits iniquity, I will chasten, uh, chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall, uh, shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. <coughs> now God sent Nathan the prophet to deliver these words to David. Well, let's consider what he said to David through the prophet. In verse 12, he said, I will set up your seed after you. God declares here that the one prophesied of would come from the seed of David. Matthew chapter 1, verse 6, as well as Luke chapter 3, verse 31, abundantly show that Jesus was descended from David. Verse 13 says, He shall build my, a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, I will build my church. And he refers to the church as the kingdom in verse 19. Jesus taught in Mark chapter 9, verse 1, that the kingdom would come when the power came. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he said that the power would come when the Holy Spirit came. And in Acts chapter 2, verses 2 through 4, 
we see that the Holy Spirit come on the day of Pentecost. Thus we see that Nathan's prophecy of the kingdom in 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 13 was fulfilled in the establishment of the Church of Christ in Acts chapter 2. It is simple to see that this prophecy is of Jesus the Christ. Simply put, prophecy proves the inspiration of the Bible and the, authentic, um, the authenticity of the gospel of Christ. The gospel is simple in prophecy. In the second place, the gospel is simple in principles. In studying the gospel message, we see that man has a problem with sin. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We see also that our sin separates from God, as Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2 says, but your iniquities have, hidden, have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. We see that sin leads to death. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, the wages of, death, uh, the wages of sin is death. We see that God made a way to fix this problem. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 further states that the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. We see that Jesus' blood shed in his death allows us to have a way to have our sins washed away in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. We see that belief in the gospel message leads men to repentance, to confession, and to baptism uh, in Acts chapter 2, verses 37 and 38. We see that our sins are washed away when we are baptized into Christ's death, Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 4, and Acts chapter 22, verse 16. We see that as people are saved, they are added to the church, Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. Now, men have tried to complicate the gospel. All they have succeeded in doing, however, is to find themselves under the condemnation of Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, which say, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you to the grace of, of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel of heaven from heaven preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As I, we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than that which you have received, let him be accursed. If we will but stick with what the New Testament teaches, without addition or subtraction, we can live out the fact that the gospel is simple in principles. Furthermore, the gospel is simple in power. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, it says that the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The gospel message was being preached, the gospel message being preached is the only way mankind can be saved. Man is not saved by some mysterious working of the Holy Spirit, but by receiving the gospel as, as it is preached. Listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, 20, verse 21. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. Yes, the gospel is simple in power. In the fourth place, the gospel is simple in practice. Jesus said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew chapter 11, verse 30. Living according to the gospel is simple. Just do what it says. Men are the ones who try to make things complicated. <coughs> when men seek to go beyond what the gospel says, they must seek to massage the gospel uh, message to justify their actions. Yet Colossians chapter, one, uh, chapter 3, verse 17 declares the need to have authority for our actions. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name or by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything without, without authority is lawlessness. Jesus speaks of the end of those who go beyond the gospel when he tells us what he will declare to them on the day of judgment. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. So long as we simply stick to the gospel, we can know that we are doing God's will. The gospel is simple in practice. In the fifth place, the gospel is simple in purpose. We read in Romans, we read Romans chapter 1, verse 16 earlier, which states that the gospel is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes. The purpose of the gospel is to restore the fellowship with God that man broke by violating God's will. 
The gospel is amazing in that it was God who provided the solution to the problem, despite the fact that it was man who caused the problem. <coughs> Why? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John chapter 3, verse 16. Jesus provided insight as to why God would want to provide a way for man to have his relationship with God restored when he spoke to the Samaritan woman at the well. In John chapter 4, verse 23, he says, But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers, worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God desires to be worshipped, and he wants to be worshipped by those who will choose to worship him. Hence, he gave us free will and provided a way through the gospel for, for us to choose to be faithful. The gospel is simple in purpose. The gospel is also simple in peace. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It is by the gospel that we can have this peace, both on this earth and in the world to come. In a world of sorrow and sin, it is this peace that allows us to live for God each day to be in the world, but not of the world. It is when we complicate our lives by letting the world in that we lose sight of that peace of God. When we take on worldliness in our lives, we become just as those written of in the Old Testament as quoted in Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through 18. which says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands, there is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside, they have gone to have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb, with their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. His mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. They are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. There is nothing simple, nothing peaceful about the ways of the world. But the gospel is simple in peace. But finally this afternoon, let's consider that the gospel is simple in participation. The Bible tells us in clear terms how one becomes a participant in the gospel of Christ. Again, the world has attempted to change things. Ironically, the denominations are teaching a different gospel, which is supposedly simpler than what the Bible teaches. Unfortunately, in their attempt to simplify, they have actually complicated things, and they are under the condemnation of Galatians 1, verses 6 through 9 for preaching a different gospel, of Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 and 19, for adding and taking away from the gospel, and of 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 1, verses 10 through 13, for causing division. And the list would go on. The terms for participation in the gospel are simple. I think everyone here knows those. We may have those listening over the internet who needs to hear them, however. One must first hear the gospel of Christ, for faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. The one who hears the gospel must develop faith, because without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Having developed faith, one must change their mind regarding sin, making a deliberate choice to stop practicing sin, thus repenting. Paul explained this step to King Agrippa in Acts chapter 26, verse 20, by saying that he taught men to repent, turn to God, and do works befitting repentance. Not only must a change of mind occur, but it must lead to a change of action. The penitent sinner will then be led by the gospel to make the good confession, the agreement that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Acts chapter 8, verse 37. <coughs> the good confession then qualifies one to be buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Having met the gospel condition, becoming participators of the gospel, we see the need to continue faithful until death so that Jesus Christ will give us the crown of life. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. The gospel is simple in participation. We have seen today that the gospel is simple. Simple in prophecy, in principles, in power, in purpose, 
uh, in practice, in peace, and in participation. Where do you stand in relation to the gospel today? If anything is amiss in your life, whether you need to obey the gospel or you need to come back and be faithful, the solution is simple, but it's up to you to take that simple step. I invite you to do that now while we stand and sing.